Hello everybody, it's Henry. So today's coffee shop talk is going to be about safety. And also I'm going to talk about safety. I'm going to talk about being too safe. And I'm going to compare that to driving on the road and the phenomenon that is happening on the road right now in America. So how would I get on this topic, you wonder? So a friend from work, I guess, watches and likes my coffee shop talk sent me an email today and said, hey, Henry, this would be a good topic to talk about. I said, well, okay, how do I blend this into my everyday life? Well, this is how I'm going to do it. So this, this safety thing says, when safety proves dangerous, not everything we do in the aim of making ourselves safer has that effect that we expect of safety. Sometimes knowing there are measurements in place to protect you you as a human, which is case in point, are willing to take more risk. That's true. And we'll, we'll discuss that. And I'm going to compare this to cars and driving and why you're seeing the erratic driving you see on the road. So they call it examples. They call it risk compensation. And the reason you got risk compensation, I'll break this down in a nutshell. This is pretty good article. Is because... The more safety features you put in place, the more risk the human are willing to take. And it's the truth. So if you look at our cars from the 1960s, when I started driving in 1970, driving 60s cars in the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, 2000 to 2024 now, our cars have come a long ways. They have anti-collision in the front. So we drive, we tend to drive and tailgate more. They have mirrors and they flag you when somebody's on your blind spot. So we tend not to use our blinkers. So we move over because the, the machine, the car is not warning us that there's somebody in our blind spot. We have airbags. So we tend to want to drive faster. Cars have said to pass safety checks and better and safer. And then they rank them on the internet. And we look at that and say, okay, well, my car is safer than that other car. I remember the Volvo commercial where they would take the Volvo and they were flipping it up on his hood to prove that the hood was safe. Well, what did you want to do? People to drive fast enough around turns like they did with Corvairs and Ralph Nader shut down Chevy because they were flipping over and killing people. So the Volvo commercial got their butt handed to them and got sued because that wasn't realistic and you were telling the people that, hey, you do this and do that and you flip your Volvo over, it was safe. When in reality, it wasn't. The roof wasn't safe. It was all a lie, but they were trying to sell a product to America. I'm not picking on Volvo. I'll just use it as a commercial example. So now we got all these commercials that talk about all these bells and whistles in cars. You know, anti-collision, smart traveling. You put cruise control on, you can set. I know my Jeep has cruise control on. I can set how close it gets to, and I trust it. Now you got cars that can drive on their own, but it's killing people. So back to the freeway. So the other day, I was we were traveling down the freeway, 70 miles an hour. We were doing 75. I'm not going to get myself in trouble. Have a police come after me and give me a damn ticket. But I got to discuss the story with you. It's a three lane. We're in the middle driving 75. We're already above the speed limit. A man with a big truck is pulling a big boat with two plus motors on it. I don't even remember, remember anymore. It's just freaking huge. So I taped it. So he got in front of us. As soon as the boat motors cleared the front of my hood, he then started moving over and then applied the breaker. I mean the blinker. He applied the blinker. Then he was in front of us. Then he pers- and he was traveling at least 80, 85 plus because he passed us like we were standing still. Then he pulled over to the right lane and he used his blinker. Then he went off the right side of the driver in the lane and passed him and merged in front of him, towing the boat at 80 plus miles an hour, 10 miles an hour plus easily above the speed limit. And everybody was... You know, we're all watching this and brake lights are coming on because when you shift lanes, you give and you've got such a big item you're towing, i.e. trucks, boats of that nature. When you go in front of the car that's on the freeway traveling at 70, 75 plus with you and you pull in front of them, you now take away their view in front of you of traffic speed and you lose depth perception. And that's what I was trying to get to people when I posted this video of all these things. So everybody on the Internet, on, I'll say TikTok picked it apart. I had 600 views in a minute, minute of minutes, right? Less than an hour, 600 views. I mean, this went viral. Well, the jackalopes out there that have this 
risk compensation mindset, right? That travel and pass on the right, speed uncontrollably, shift lanes without using blinkers or late using blinkers, weave in and out of the traffic traveling down the road thinking that they're getting ahead of you, everybody, right? Then trolled me and started sending me all kinds of stuff. Douchebag, get off the road. Hey, butthead, don't travel in the middle lane. Slow cars in the right lane. Well, the speed limit, I'll repeat myself, was 70 miles an hour. I was above the speed limit. Since when do you, on the road, dictate my safety and dictate how fast I should drive in the middle lane to where it forces you to pass me on the right, which is illegal in every state, or weave in and out of traffic on a freeway thinking you're getting ahead of the next guy, which you're not. Well, all this phenomenon happening on the roads, which we've seen over the past 15, 20 years, is because of the risk compensation. Because the car manufacturers and the state lawmakers think they're making a car safer will make the drivers better. Actually, it says in this report, as you read it further down the line, that accident rates have increased and not decreased. Well, they've increased because the risk, the risk compensation, thinking their vehicle is safer, has called drivers to be more reckless. Because they become more reckless, the accident rate has gone up, and the amount of people being injured and killed has gone up. It's a natural phenomenon. I see it where I work. We work around a dry dock. It's probably a 60 plus foot drop easily. There's yellow skirting up all around a handrail and people lean on it all the time because there's no sign on it. So they lean on it because they feel safe. If the barrier wasn't there, they wouldn't even go near it because they wouldn't feel safe. But because they feel safe and there's no signs on it anymore like there used to be, it says don't lean on it. They actually lean on it more and they lean on it without thinking. And they le- I had a guy leaning on it he was actually dozing off while he was leaning on the yellow barrier. That's called risk, risk compensation because you feel comfortable with the safety features in place. You are then willing to take more risk of what you do. It's a phenomenon that's happened all my life and I've seen it. I've seen it on some rings. I've seen it when a guy got his fish and he's now qualified. And actually, when they got qualified and got their fish, I put more eyes on target and paid attention to them and give them and give them to a person that was more qualified, had been there, more senior, for a reason. And people used to ask me, but he's got his fish now. He can do it on his own. I said, no, no, no. See, his confidence level is up. Because his confidence level is up, he was causing more problems. And he actually had more issues. And he made more mistakes because he had the confident factor he could do it and nobody could stop him. And that was just because we put dolphins on his chest. So I've seen this risk compensation, not only in safety, but I saw it in in confidence in somebody's work performance. I've seen it all the time. I've seen it when new people have come to the boat and they're cocky and ready to go to show what they can do. And they have so much confidence, they actually show off. And when they're showing off, they actually do more harm and they cause more mistakes. They're not what you think they are because their confidence level gets them in trouble. And why? Because they drop their mindset of being safe. It changes. It changes. It has a natural phenomenon occurrence within the human body. I've seen it on the way. I've seen it when I was on a crew and we did a mission. And the mission went well. Went really well. No problems, no stress. We got into the second part and did another mission back to back. I had people that were toe to toe with each other. The confidence level went up. The attention to detail went down. And there was actually people having outright problems. And the performance level wasn't as good as the first time. The dynamics change. It's quite it's quite normal in human beings to happen. That's it, risk compensation. But I don't think it's just risk compensation. I think it's with it's with anything we do as humans, with anything that we are involved in. Confidence does that. The belief that you're okay does that. And that's very dangerous. And it can get you in a lot of trouble.
And I see people driving. I'm going to stick with the road. I see people driving on the road doing this quite a bit. Speeding, changing lanes, radically, not using blinkers, zigzagging out of traffic. Road rage. Road rage because everybody's not doing what you want them to do. That's all part of this risk compensation and because of the cars and the way they've been designed. And then, of course, you add arrogance of people, the confidence in them, um, the know-it-all attitude. Then they add that in there, and then it becomes even more trial. So if you thought this was, you were weird, and you were different, and this shouldn't be happening, you're correct, it shouldn't be happening. But the reason it's happening is because what I just told you. It's part of this phenomenon of risk risk compensation and safety. But you can compare that to almost anything in a work environment. People working and stuff. People just get qualified something. Driving on the road especially. Now the phenomenon why this is happening and you go, what the hell? I wasn't taught that. So I'm 62 and I got people calling me douchebag, old bag, get off the road. You don't deserve, you shouldn't be here, blah, blah, blah. It's amazing their confidence level that can talk. And why did they got that confidence? That goes at risk compensation. I'll put it with the internet, with social media. People hiding behind a computer because they're not face to face with Henry. And I'm, trust me, you don't want to be face to face with me. <laughs> so being face to face with Henry is different than when I'm behind a computer. I'm behind a computer. I'm willing to take that risk factor and make those comments to a person that's five foot five, weighs 230 pounds, and is built like a small brick shit house, right? And my nickname is Little Hercules. When I can pick a pallet jack up and move something that's 5,000 pounds by myself, and I'm not talking at one foot or six inches, I'm talking 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 feet without stopping. Your attitude when you're in front of me, your risk compensation changes, and you know your life is is at risk for pissing me off or saying nasty things to me, or stepping into my boundary of safety, which is my arm length, changes your risk compensation, and you don't do that to me. But because you're in social media, and you're behind a computer or your phone, and you think that you're safe because you don't know what you're looking at, you change your risk compensation, and your mouth changes, and it gets nasty and dirty. But in reality, if you were in front of the person doing it, you'd understand that your life was at risk, and you wouldn't do that. So this whole thing in this topic is control your mouth, control what you say on the internet. Stop being nasty to people that are disabled, have problems, have a learning defect, or just different than you, or different beliefs, or different ideology, or like people that are different than you, or at different topics. Stop being nasty and angry. Stop taking that risk compensation, thinking that you're buying a computer, that you're okay, and you can speak that way to people. Because I'll tell you what will happen is, it's a disease that then pollutes your mind It's like watching pornography. You watch enough of it, you don't even want to have sex with your own partner. Your whole life changes. Speaking behind computers and being nasty to people, you'll tend to be a nasty person at work and your whole mindset changes. And what happens is you'll get fired. You'll be targeted. You'll turn it into a hostile work environment and you'll be asked to go. Because that's also the defect of a risk compensation. And being behind a computer or driving on the road, you'll get road rage. I saw the road rage on the phone just talking about the video I posted. It wasn't that that was wrong. I was posting an opinion. But because people have this risk compensation and they think it's okay, and they also incorporate into the lives of behind the computer and become keyboard keyboard typewriter guys and think they can talk nasty to people because they don't look at them eye to eye in person. This risk compensation that you do on the road, your personal life, and behind the computer will catch up to you. You'll lose your job. You'll lose your friends. You'll become an angry, isolated person. And then all you're going to do is say hateful things all day long on the internet. Then you become a hateful person. And you become isolated. Then what happens you get angry, you lash out, and you do evil things. So my pitch to you about this topic and why we're talking about it is watch your risk compensation. Incorporate it in your life and everything you do and how you work around people. Pull yourself back in. Just because you're on social media doesn't mean you have the right to call somebody a douchebag. Or tell them to get off the road. Or stop driving. Or go kill themselves. Or do nasty things to each other. We need to stop that. And that comes from the same topic 
of this article called Risk Examples of Risk Compensation. I gave you a bunch of them. It's not just on road or safety. It's also at your home, your life, your partnership, your marriage, work, and socializing with others. You're too safe and comfortable behind that computer and you think nobody can touch you or hurt you. So what you do is you break the boundaries and you break the social media. You break the ability to talk as a human being and act like a human being. It's the same people that go and protest and they do all this crap and all this stuff in college. They feel they're safe and nobody's going to do anything to them. So they have this risk compensation thinking that everybody's going to agree what they think because it's allowed in the place that they go to do what they do to learn, worship, or be taught. That risk compensation is causing people to go bonkers and do things that normal people would not go do, and that's destroying people's property, killing each other, belittling each other, and calling each other names and destroying each other because that's the the country we designed with this risk compensation mindset. We put too many safety barriers in place, and now people feel comfortable in stepping over it, and nobody's going to do anything for them or do anything to them. That's what it's bled into our life. It's gone from safety to our home life because you're willing to take the risk because you know that you're protected by other things. So doing so, you do more evil things. That's my pitch. That's my coffee shop talk. I think it's a good topic. I think you need to really take a step back and look at the kind of risk you take on your mouth and what you type on the keyboard. And you're not protected as much as you think you are. I'm not perfect. I learned that example the other day, yesterday. I sent something I called the guy a ding-dong, and then I had to think about it. But I called him a ding-dong because he had information. It was misinformation. And he was putting a video on there, jumping up and down and acting like an idiot. And I felt comp- I felt like I had to call him that. And I also fell in the trap of the risk compensation because I felt comfortable behind a keyboard that I could type it and call him a ding-dong. Then I took it back, and I told him I apologized to him, and I took it back off. But he aired it all over the internet. Look at this guy. He can't spell it right. I've said it before. I've had traumatic brain injuries from stuff through my life. I fight it every day, and I fight different other learning disabilities trying to type and write. I speak better. That's why I do it this way. I don't want to be on camera because you don't need to look at my face. I want you to listen to my voice and what I got to tell you. I'm not perfect, and I made that mess. I made those mistakes just yesterday. And I realized that it ate at me and I took it down and I apologized. Then I looked at this and I saw this safety proved dangerous letter that came in that this guy sent me from work. I love him to death. He's a really good man. So Nate sent me this and that's why I'm talking on it. And then I saw the examples of risk compensation and I able to put this into, I hope, of, 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 of understanding how it affects driving, working behind the keyboard, talking to others, your social pattern, how you work at work. And that you're willing to take more risk because you have more safety features in place. And then you feel comfortable going further and further to a point of no return and you hurt somebody and you cause harm. And you really didn't get your point across. And you get you get trampled on, you get criticized, and you get stifled. And you cause people to be more angry. When actually you're just trying to make them to be um, less ignorant and understand what you were talking about. That makes sense to you? I hope it does. This is Henry's Coffee Shop Talk. I'm sorry I talked for almost 20 minutes. But I think it was an important message. I think people need to really look at it. Look at your risks that you're taking. Put the safety belt back on. Slow down. Watch what you say. Don't feel comfortable with the safety ground, safety barriers that are in front of you. That what you say, what you do, and what your actions are, that you're okay. Pull it back in. And I think this, this information I put out today really made sense. It's a phenomenon, and I've actually fallen victim to it, and now I'm sharing it with you. Don't fall victim to the internet and fall victim to what people are saying, especially people are saying evil, nasty things, going after somebody else, thinking it's funny. It's a human being. We talk about bullying. Cyberbullying and social media is out of control, and it starts with adults, and the adults are out of control. We don't want children to do it and on each other, but yet adults do it. And not only do adults do it, the rich adults and the rich and famous are doing it too. And they think it's okay too, but it's adult bullying. Going out and saying nasty, evil things about a person because you you don't like them or you hate them and you say it on the social media, that's risk compensation. You're taking a chance. And some people have done that and are already feeling the repercussion of it. Don't use a position of power to influence others 
to think the way you think and talk nasty about somebody. Don't do it. Stay away from that risk compensation phenomenon that the human mind has, thinking that it's okay to go above and beyond and do something stupid. That's all I got to say. Henry out. Have a good day.